Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we continue our journey through automation and its light campaign mode V2 in open beta currently. And we just designed a replacement for the VA55, another family vehicle doing really well so far. Uh, had a bit of trouble self-cannibalizing markets here with the uh, mini sprint and some initial... Yeah, chaos with the new sales to Froenia, but now seems to have somewhat stabilized with a pretty good flow of revenue and we still have loads of cars sitting in stock which are just waiting to give us money. Uh, that's all good and what I want to do today is uh, to... Uh, it's 1961, let's just take a look at the research first if we do need to unlock something really cool first before we design the new car. Uh, the replacement for the Mini Sprint, like a proper light sports car. Uh, and top end... Well... I think that would make sense. Like, to wait for this one. So if we wait two months, then this one should have ticked up enough to catch up with this. So let's just go ahead and tick it a little. And slow. There we go. Okay, it ticked over to 1962, so now we have this extra tech pool if we design a new car. And... Yes, uh, Light sports car it is. Okay, let's go ahead. The VA55 Mini Sprint does need to be replaced. And if possible, we want to have a convertible version as well, because the Freudians kind of like those. Oh... Hmm... Prestige minus 10. <laughs> It's not quite as bad as the minus 18 here, but our reputation is still good. Um, all good. New car! And we wanted to design this one. Yes, that is correct. And it does have the convertible version as well. It easily passes as a light sports car if we design it correctly. Uh, let's see, the fastback should be the way to go here. Because this one has worse... Uh, does it have an advantage? An actual advantage has worse aerodynamics, of course, because of this big step in here. While the fastback is very aerodynamic for its time period, at least. We're going with double wishbone and all steel construction, monocoque though, and uh, double wishbone now has uh, still has 17.5% um, familiarity. It's getting better and better, but of course. We just signed off on a project which also had 17.5% familiarity, and that is reasonably because, uh, well, they weren't finished designing it yet, so you can't get familiarity for it yet. Rear wheel drive is a must. And oh, the color. What color? Yay! Let's go with the uh, yellow color again, but I want to have my banana color again. Where's my banana color? There it is. Okay. Um, for you, those of you who don't know, if you have selected a, co a color, a new color, then you can just right-click here in one of the fields and you get that as your new default. So um, you can make your custom color palettes really easily. Now, what are we going for here? Maybe it is time to venture forth and go for an inline 6. A little bit more prestigious as well. And not too far away from the inline 4. I do want to keep to the inlines though, because that gives us enough familiarity to um, keep going. Overhand cam, and we're going for the free valve just to make sure that we have enough familiarity building up there. And maybe it would make sense to try out the full alloy. Um, build of the block. On the other hand, we just tried out the inline 6 and that would give us a massive amount of, of uh, engineering time, which we don't really want right now. So now I'm going to stick with the iron block for now and want to be more familiar with the inline 6s first. If it was in inline 4, which we are already familiar with, then I would like go and see, ah, maybe the full alloy engine would make sense. Uh, but how, what capacity are we going with? We want to rev this thing and keep it small in order to rev it. Maybe 2 liters? 2 liter... This is an iron block after all. Hmm. 
maybe 1.9 or 1.8 yeah that looks like a river okay um, let's go with a 1.8 liter in line 6 really small really revy standard components on the bottom end and we start out with a compression of 8.0 um, yeah don't need more there uh, top end mm, that is the one which we just got so we could either spend it to rev higher or we could just leave it there to reduce uh, engineering time and maybe here it makes sense to go with a four barrel hmm just to get a little bit of familiarity in the four barrel because they have a bit of uh, overlap to SPFI and stuff and SPFI is coming in the late 70s one issue with that is that we cannot really afford to give this too much quality now so this is at 210 if we go to plus 8 our standard oh no material cost doesn't go up that much it's still good just a hundred bucks extra for the, all the reliability we're getting that is a very good deal so let's do that one reverse flow muffler probably ending up at yeah 80 something horsepower um, no more okay and knocking a bit let's get rid of that and see how how much power we can make there we go 96 horsepower how much more is in the engine before we lose reliability though a little bit yeah quite a bit so I will up cam profile a bit more just to get to 100 horsepower sounds like a good number for marketing and now we have even more headroom here 101 yeah perfect 110 there that's not a limiting factor not too much of a limiting factor and I think we have a really good engine manual it has to be and uh, no overdrive gear for this one I don't know how much we really want to have in the spacing but I would assume that wheel spin is an issue so we are going for a bit of a sporty close gear ratio setup 620 is the maximum we can go for in size no, no not doing the magnesium wheels nope but is this really the maximum yes it is oh this looks so skinny and of course the solid disc one here and the drum in the rear Let's see where we go from there um, no under tray and the cooling yeah maybe double because these cars don't really have to be uh, fast when it comes to top speed but rather they need to be handling well and so that doesn't really infringe on their skills to do that on the other hand it ups um uh, it lowers prestige a bit if you go too too far up in the cooling it's a two-seater and let's make it really basic probably need power steering and standard safety for this one just to make it a bit lighter it doesn't make much difference though advanced 60 safety yeah let's engineer that twice so that we have a good familiarity uh, the next time around once these cars are done it's still the 60s we can still use the 60s safety equipment if we are before what would that be like 69 or something we have free tech pool though nah, I don't know definitely want to be using the standard springs in order to retain the sportiness because now we are in a time where you can actually start to build some kind of sporty car if you put a revving engine into it let's get the market set up correctly I know Ahana can't afford shit oh, light sports light sport car 
Okay, there we go. And... Um... What more do we want? Light sport and light sport budget in Frenia. Drivability counts as much as sportiness for the light sport budget, and sportiness counts more uh, than drivability for the light sport. So we want to get up the sportiness value if possible without destroying the other stats. Brake setup is looking very much decent now. Can't complain about that. Uh, on the other hand, this I'm not convinced about. Uh, and we don't have much to play with here either. So this needs to come from suspension setup. What do we need to do? Well, roll angle should be around 3. So I could lower this one and up this one a bit. So this gives us closer to 1 here while retaining the low roll angle. They really do like their sportiness though, so I'm going to try to go somewhat in the other direction here. Let's see, does that help? Oh, there seems to be a sweet spot somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in there. Just get a decent amount of sportiness um, without straining the other stats too much. There we go, very good. Uh, for the camber, we can make it handle slightly better by just increasing that. It gives more cornering, and let's see, how much do they care about the cornering? Is it even there? 10%. That's a big factor for for this. So the better your cornering speeds, the better the rating in the light sports category. Yes, this also helped. So now we are a, at a 0 to 100 time of 9.7 seconds. Don't have much wheel spin. We could try to give the engine a bit more power. Uh, so that would mean more capacity in the case, because we're already revving as high as we can. Oh, it's not much more in that. Oh, I forgot to put more quality into the interior. That will help. And in this too. And do they like the advanced safety? Yeah, I think they do. Yes. Even though it's a bit heavier, it's not much of a difference. Um, like 2%. Alright, but I think this is a very solid design to, uh, to have going. So I'll just name it and then we create the premium variant of it too. And here we go. So base variant is done. And now for the premium variant. What are we going to put into this? Mm, let's see. Uh, Probably is premium and premium. How does it fare then? Market. Oh yeah. All right. Now it's going into the light sport segment a bit more. Um, although maybe already a bit too heavy for that. Oh, also, I know why we are not doing well in the light sports segment. Just look at the the weighting of prestige versus reputation. Uh, we have awful prestige and very good reputation. Uh, yes, doesn't help us with this one. This actually gives us a penalty. Also, we want to make a convertible out of this one. And yeah, we are losing a lot of good stats with this one just because it's so much heavier because of the construction. It's unfortunate, but nothing you can do about it. Just get rid of the bottoming out for the extra weight. And we do need less camber rear. Yep, that was optimal. Cool. What about the brakes? The brakes kinda suck right now. Uh, the front we can only correct in case we up the quality a bit more, which I don't want to do. So, just putting up the brake pad in the rear. Yep, that should be good enough. It's almost there. We can shave off another meter or so from the brake distance if we get it up there. If even that. But yes, it's doing really well in convertible sport budget. Overall, I think the design is 
much better overall as we are not infringing upon the categories which our normal VA um, mass production car does. So no cannibalization and uh, happy smiley faces when we are looking at the sales. Should be less confusing too. In case you're wondering why I don't assign engineers, well, they are off doing the other project, remember? They can't work on two at once. That is, that is why. And we can get this one all the way to... Oh, yes, we can. Uh, four years. There we go. How expensive is this? Wow, okay. It's getting close to 90 million, uh, just for the engineering. And what factory do you want? We want to have the mini sprint factory. So assign this one. And the Vashtuk. The Vashtuk plant, of course. It's not too expensive, but 50 million still. And 13 million there. Let's take a look. What what about the engines? Cars made a day 236 and engines per day. Ooh. It's an inline six, it's more difficult to make, so we have to invest a little bit into the engine factory just to upgrade it to a level which can keep keep um, track of the car production. All right, there we go. Um, that doesn't look too shabby, especially considering that we are not cannibalizing the upper market. Uh, these sales number do look pretty good. Um, I'm going to produce less of the convertible as this one doesn't require quite as much and now we are almost leveled out for the various productions so like this and there we go could produce more but I'm going to set this oh shit <laughs> one sec I have to mark them up of course oh this isn't looking quite as good anymore All right, uh, I think this this kind of does it. And how much does it cost? Only 180 million. That's not bad. It's not bad. Let's sign sign off and see what comes out of it. So now we have the uh, V61 and the V61 Sprint. Uh, does sound a bit confusing, I know, because uh, that would indicate that they're basically the same car, but they are very much not. So <laughs> My uh, naming conventions are not the best in the world. Um, okay. So now the next thing to do would be to maybe just advance a bit of time and uh, check our finances that we are not going completely bankrupt. But yeah, this graph is still looking promising. Let's keep a look also at the various stock levels to not overproduce massively. All right, we sold out of all the mini sprints, so we can increase the production now for sure, just uh, now that we are back at a reasonable level. And uh, the sales of the VA55 are going really well, and as soon as the stock of the mini sprint was empty, you could see the uh, stock of the VA55 was dropping, was starting to drop before it was building up. So it is cannibalization of our models that's going on here. So let me just readjust the production of both of these models. And oh yes, we do need uh, either higher markup or uh, this one. This one isn't doing too, too well. Okay, now they are all much more in line once again. Uh, I can't I can't get production under control unless I mark them up more. Um, not really wanting to do that right now because we have such a big stock on, especially these cars, for several months. And uh, yeah, not the best idea, I guess. On the other hand, I need to change the mini sprint because that one has been selling out rapidly now. And we're only at 1.6 shifts. Well, yeah, that, that we can change. So go up to like 2.3. That doesn't cost us much. And produce a few less of the base variant. And a few less of this one. And now they're all balanced. Okay. 
Now we can just increase maybe the markup. Let's try that. Yes, much better. Okay. Uh, that should help us quite a bit to balance things. I don't want to go overboard here either because we are, like I said, cannibalizing. Or oh, if we just let this run for a month, let's see what comes out. Yes, okay, now perfect. We have a very slight build up of mini sprint stock and we are still doing well with the sales of the VA55. Um, well, not that well, like 400k, so we have overproduced significantly, I guess, once again. Let's roll another month. These, still about five, six months here. Ooh. Okay, let's roll another month and see, 2477. Oh yeah, massive overproduction here, but the mini sprint is doing well. Okay, and well, I think this uh, conclu concludes today's episode. Hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time!